Animals possess both naturally selected and sexually selected traits. So here in the middle of the deer rut, the red deer stag is using his antlers that he grows during the spring and summer to attract a harem of females to ensure he defends and protects that harem of females. And he roars really loudly across the park to reduce the chances of being threatened or displaced by other males. Exhibit A. So this mixture of naturally selected traits, such as being really efficient and really good at foraging to pack on a lot of energy, combined with the development of these sexually selected traits, the antlers that are used to attract females and to displace rival males, ensure the animal is a really good fit into its ecosystem. The red deer is our largest land mammal in the UK and it has a really long history with humans. We have kept them as an ornamental species, we have hunted them for food and today we manage them in parks like this one in Richmond just outside of London to ensure there's good diversity in habitats. The deer are really good at managing habitat in a really natural way. So understanding their ecology, understanding how they live and understanding the adaptations they have is really, really important when we are managing them in spaces like this one, which require human influence, because we know exactly what we need. We can provide the right social groups and we can provide the right environment for them. So knowledge of evolution is not just academic, it's actually an applied aspect of animal behaviour too. Let's talk about this applied aspect in more detail. At the front of this video, you can see a red deer stag with his harem of females that he's collected together for the purposes of breeding. The managed landscape of the park enables the deer to have space away from rivals. He can parade around calling and intimidating rivals without direct conflict. And also his hinds have enough space to rest, chew the cud, and relax without constant interference. So our knowledge of the deer, their behaviour patterns and seasonal changes in activity is important for those that live alongside of them and work alongside of them too. If we have a look a bit more closely as to what's going on, you might be able to see, if you squint, behind the herd of deer at the front, there are two stags that are posturing and actually engage in direct competition. Testosterone changes and hormone concentration changes at this time of the year during the rut can make stags unpredictable and dangerous. Understanding the seasonal changes in behaviour and the causation behind the behaviour patterns and why they are occurring allows humans to steer well clear of them, give them plenty of space and therefore avoid getting in harm's way. When outside of the rut in spring and summer, when stags are eating and growing and putting on condition, they're actually rather placid. So we can see these differences in behavioural condition with different time of the year. Again, another applied aspect to understanding deer evolution. And when a stag gets really aggressive and really angry and really wants to show off, he will paw at the ground with his front hooves and he will thrash around with his antlers. And he thrashes around with his antlers in the vegetation to cover them in grass and leaves and other decorative ornaments that the hinds might find attractive. But if you see a stag doing this, steer well clear because he's currently at the pinnacle of his breeding fitness and could be very unpredictable and dangerous. In spite of all the posturing and the growth of antlers, the stags don't actually want to get in direct conflict with each other. This could be damaging, inflict injury and be potentially fatal. So the stags roar, probably in my opinion, one of their most impressive behaviours during the rut to advertise their presence and more importantly to advertise their strength. The roaring allows stags to size each other up without coming to blows. 
the stag with the deepest voice is the one that's going to be most intimidating and therefore potential rivals for his harem of females will stay away. The roaring also tells the females, the hinds, about the quality of the stag as a mate. And research has shown that female hinds in breeding condition prefer a stag with a deeper voice. This is really fascinating because it tells us about sexually selected traits across mammals. And some scientists have drawn similarities between the deep bellowing roar of the red deer and the reasons why female humans prefer men at certain times of their estrus cycle with deeper voices. So studying the evolution and sexually selected traits in the deer actually tells us a lot about the behaviour of the human animal too. This was just a short example of why knowledge of naturally selected and sexually selected traits using the red deer rut as an example is really important to the animal behaviour scientist as well as to the general population that live alongside of wild animals. The more we understand them, the more we can cater for their needs and the more we can reduce any impact or interference in their daily lives out in the wild. Thank you very much.